Hey everyone, it's Titan Sage back with another video about the monthly Titan Quest 2 news. This update has dropped a couple of days later than the previous updates, which were all released on the last of the month. So uh, let's look into the June update. The title is Mythological Level Design. The monthly announcement starts out hilarious. Long ago, in the year AD 2006, we first embarked on an epic journey that began in ancient Greece. <laughs> they refer to the year 2006 when Titan Quest 1 came out. Considering that I bought my copy of Titan Quest 1 back in 2006, I kind of feel old right now. They want to create an experience worthy of the original. And in order to achieve that, they have the world of Titan Quest 2 handcrafted from the ground up. The next portion of the devlog might come across as a little boring, but trust me, it gets spicy later on. The developers describe that they designed the locations with the history and mythology of ancient Greece in mind. They talk about the Bronze Age Mycenaean civilization, the Archaic Era, and Doric Temple, huh? Honestly, I don't know what to make of it, so let's just move on. The first image looks decent. We get a little lighting this time, which makes the image look somewhat better than those of the previous updates. There are also some Ichthians along the way. This type of enemy has been explained in the April update. If you look closely, you see an adventurer climbing a ladder at the very bottom. The setting in this image looks really good and realistic. Imagine you see the Ichthians run towards you once they took note of your presence, approaching you in a creepy manner. At the very top of the hill we also see two new types. There's a scroll on the right, which is highlighted by some sparkly stuff. These scrolls might be either scrolls of teleportation or scrolls of item identification, but if you think about it, these two types of scrolls will probably not be in the game. You needed identification scrolls in Diablo, Path of Exile and many other ARPGs to identify items, as well as town portal scrolls to get back home to fill up on healing potions and sell your loot. This was never needed in Titan Quest 1, so I think it is unlikely that the developers introduce this mechanic. The scroll in the picture might actually be something different, similar to the scrolls we get in Titan Quest 1 DLC. Upon scroll consumption, you could fire an Ice Nova, summon minions, etc. It is likely that the scroll we see here will grant the player some kind of buff for tough fights. On the other side, there's a treasure chest, also highlighted by the sparkly shining above it, indicating that it's an item the player should interact with. It is no big surprise that there are treasure chests in Titan Quest 2. The third thing that's interesting about this one shot is the stuff that the Ichthian sorcerer is holding. This one looks different than the ones we were introduced with in the April Ichthian faction update. It might indicate that this stuff is some sort of legendary item. In Titan Quest 1 it was also the case that random monsters had legendary armor or weapons equipped and you could see them wielding it from far away. Maybe this is also the case here, but that is just speculation. Let's move on to the second picture, which looks incredible. This is by far the most impressive artwork that we got so far. From an architectural standpoint, it seems a bit unrealistic to build an intricate temple entrance right in the middle of a cave, right next to moving water and waterfalls, but what do I know, it's possible these kinds of things existed or still exist. Titan Quest 2 will be a fantasy game with realistic elements, so this seems to fit quite well. The devlog goes on with Titan Quest 2's world is a blend of open roaming spaces and structured points of interest. Our roaming areas are tailored towards freedom of exploration, environmental interaction, 
verticality and uncovering secrets. Ladders can be climbed, ledges jumped. And if you look closely, you might even notice that it's possible to interact with a part of the environment to create a new way forward. Epic vista points reveal glorious panoramic views of the picturesque handcrafted world. This is a bomb they have just dropped. Titan Quest 1 is the game I constantly compare these announcements with, but rightfully so, because the developers stated that they want to expand on the things that Titan Quest 1 already did well. You can climb ladders and jump ledges, which opens up the gameplay by a whole lot, makes the gameplay incredibly more realistic. I love it that you can mess around with your environment to open up a new path and discover hidden areas. This will be a very welcome improvement and I'm looking forward to it. The gameplay will most likely have a different feel because of this and it will feel like an exploration rather than a mindless hack and slay game where you walk a fixed path and fight the same sets of monsters over and over again. The text continues with Meanwhile, smaller site locations and structured points of interest break up an open world, offering opportunities for grand adventures like a harrowing mountain climb leading to a griffin's nest. The world itself provides player guidance, and we are sure you will be pleased to see the classic zone torches return. That sounds awesome, but to be honest, I don't know what the zone torches even did. Maybe spawn the monsters in the area you just entered. The developers possibly mean the fountain mechanic that when you went to a new area you could go to a fountain which served as a respawn location in case you died. The next image looks also very good. It almost looks like a painting when you look at the sea area with the shipwreck, but this is in-game graphics. This is absolute confirmation that a whole lot of detail and handcrafting went into the world building and I love it. A lot of detail went into creating this one scene with the skeletons, seashells, rope and the shipwreck parts all the way to the anchor. The image shows a hero facing a couple of Ichthian grunts. I can't wait to see this not as a picture but in moving, real-time game graphics. While the devlog continues to explain the new jump from ledges mechanic to discover new areas, we go on with the next picture, which also looks jaw-dropping. If you take a closer look at the detail of the temple, statues, or the realistic-looking plants and the waterfall. Just imagine this image in moving graphics with a flowing waterfall, trees moving in the wind, etc. It will be awesome, confirmed. I even liked the approach of the latest Titan Quest 1 DLC, Eternal Embers. They went in a similar direction with huge areas, many secret paths and an environment that looks realistic. I liked exploring this world very much already. Just imagine how awesome this will be in Titan Quest 2. The next portion of the devlog is very well written, so I wouldn't do it justice by summing it up. You never know what might be waiting for you just ahead. From towering colossi of the Olympian pantheon to ancient 3M shipwrecks yet to be plundered or even a sunken temple where the remains of honored statues and sacred chambers once dedicated to the great sea gods now lie encrusted with barnacles as the ocean claims them back. A ruined shrine with a mysterious riddle could be an opportunity to win the favor of a god, while a relic of the titans might be hidden underground waiting to turn the unsuspecting into monsters. Attention to detail is key to ensuring that all the locations contribute to the end goal of crafting a world worthy of myth and legend. The last image shows some sort of shrine. We had those in Titan Quest 1 already. Shrines were in random locations and you could click on them and they granted different buffs to all party members 
standing close to the shrine upon activation. The shrine in this image seems to be just that. We had different shrines in TQ1. Battle marker, which gave you increased armor and attack speed. Shrine of reflection, which gave you a damage reflect buff. Frost shrines, which gave you additional ice damage and many more. These exact ones and possibly some new ones will be in TQ2 soon. The new game can't reinvent the wheel though and many shrines from the previous game will most likely overlap with the new game. This monthly update was awesome. It gave a little hidden insight towards the items which will be a topic of future updates. We can't really adjust our estimation on when the game will come out. I still think the game won't come out before September 2024. Again, better to have an awesome finished game than a buggy mess. I wouldn't mind to wait another year if the game is awesome. Dear developers, if you see this, don't rush it to cater to some deadlines only to deliver a half finished product. I am so happy that the developers respect the source material of Titanfall 1 and want to expand on that. This is exactly what I hoped for. This is it for this review. I can't wait for the game to come out to make in-depth game mechanic explanations and to craft builds. Subscribe for more Tati Quest 2 news. So as soon as the game comes out, I will make build ideas and explain how the mechanics work. So subscribe to this channel if that is of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate that you took the time to watch the full video. Please let me know in the comments what you liked about this update and what you liked or disliked about this video. Drop a like and see you guys next time. Bye.